When working the high vertical wall, you'll want to wind your dog up and get him to attack the jump. Remember to keep him in the center of the wall and don't jump too late. <laughs> when teaching the spiral staircase, you walk up the stairs with your dog at heel. Most dogs are accustomed to straight stairs, so these turns are hard. Going over the box on top is an easy up and easy off. Going onto the extension is an easy off, a turn, and a down. When you're training your dog to go under the boards, make sure you go slowly. About halfway through the boards, one extends down about six inches, so your dog has to duck there. If he goes too fast, he'll hit his head. Coming down the stairs, you'll use a goat step. That's front right, front left, back left, back right. Think of it as one, two, four, three. Nugget's pacing going down these stairs is a little erratic. You want your dog to be consistent in his stepping. When approaching the tubes, you want your dog to get onto the platform and then stay. Only after he has all four feet on the platform will you allow him to step into the tubes. These tubes are very unstable. They're only held up by two chains extending to the ceiling. Because of this, you want your dog to stay at every tube, wait until they're stable, and then move again. The suspended plank is even more unstable. Stay your dog when he has two feet on the plank. When he's comfortable, step across and make sure he stays on the right side of the gap. Stepping off the plank should be a balance step. You'll notice here, Nugget steps forward with his front left foot first, which is incorrect. There are two things to be concerned with when walking across the beam with a fence. First, don't let your dog lean, and second, don't stand on the rail. The beam with the spikes is a little more difficult. You want your dog to walk with his paws on either side of the spikes. This will make your dog fairly nervous when he begins learning it. You'll definitely want to stay your dog at some point when walking across. This will slow him down and allow him to get accustomed to the height and the spikes. This wall is about seven feet high and is fairly easy to jump. Make sure your dog gets a good start and steps over the gap between the wall and the tube. These stairs are the widest stairs in the park. You'll be using a goat step coming down. Make sure your dog doesn't rush coming down these stairs and it shouldn't be a problem. The S-curve is more dangerous than it is difficult. Because of this, when you're teaching, you want to make sure you have your dog's leash on. Going up the blocks, you want to use a pattern step, which you can see Nugget doing here. All four feet should touch the top post. Coming down, you'll be using a goat step. Because you're not turning at all, this is a fairly difficult goat step to teach. As a consequence, you'll teach this goat step more slowly than any other one you teach in the park. Stepping onto the sewer cap is a balance step. Then it's easy off. The shaking angled beams is one of the most difficult obstacles at tops. Climbing up the steps, you must touch each step, but never have more than one paw on a step at a time. Pause your dog at the platform with a short stay. Pause your dog at the beam with a short stay as well. Once you're on the beam, it's a pattern step. Stay. Nugget likes to rush, so I stay him to slow him down. When you're making the turn, slide the back left foot over to line up with the second beam. The ends of the beams are unsupported and are very unstable. Be careful when you're training a new dog to do this. When you get to the end of the beam, move your dog's back feet close to the end 
and then off. It's easy to trip on that gap between the two grates, so when you're training, be careful there. As you would expect, the return is identical. Pattern step on the beam, line up the back left foot on the turn, and then pattern step the rest of the way. Your dog must run to the first and second boards on the slanted roof. Once he gets up there, he must put his right two legs on board two and his left two legs on board one. As your dog is crossing the gaps, you want to move his back legs as close to the front legs as possible, and you should be crossing with a balance step. To do this obstacle correctly, you must never allow your dog to touch board three. It's easier, but not correct. The third gap on the roof is the hardest. Here you see Nugget cheating by using his left foot to go to the lower board first. This isn't particularly dangerous, so if your dogs do this, it's okay. To get to the top board, turn, place the two front paws on the top board, and pull, not jump. If your dog is on level three, walking across this top board shouldn't be a problem. It's a straight pattern step and make sure your dog walks slowly. This goat step is really hard because you have to pull your dog over to his right as he's coming down. Coming down to the right, here you see Nugget repositioning his feet so he's solid. Step. Go. Here you see Nugget moving his front right and back left foot simultaneously. This is not safe, so I'll correct him, put his feet back, and do it again. Good. Good. Step. Off. The bottom board is balance step on and pattern step across. The board is extremely unstable. So to slow him down, I'll stay Nugget as he's walking across. To train this, you'll be inside the cage, stabilizing the board as he's learning. Stay your dog as he's transitioning from the board to the blocks. Very good. Free. The stairs on this obstacle are free swinging. Notice Nugget's jump is a grab and a pull, so he stays stable when he lands. Nugget is not using a balance step, so he falls off balance right here. Later in the summer, I taught him to do this obstacle with a balance step, and we didn't have that problem anymore. The platform is free swinging as well, so you want to stay in the transition from the steps to the platform. Because the platform moves around so much, Make sure your dog stays at least once to make it stable. Stay again on the transition down to the unstable boards. Walking across the boards is a pattern step. When you get to the next set of steps, stay your dog. Nugget is going down these steps using a goat step, but the pacing's too fast to be safe. Walking on the top of this tube is by far the most difficult part of any obstacle at tops. Notice how deliberately Nugget moves his feet. He never lifts a second foot until the first foot is firmly planted. When you get to the crossboard, make sure both front feet and then both back feet go onto the board. When you're teaching this obstacle, make sure your dog is wearing a leash so you can catch him if he starts to fall. When you're transitioning over to the board, Make sure all four feet step on the board and do so very slowly. When coming back, make sure the back two feet are firmly on the board before your dog starts pushing forward with his front feet. When coming back, you'll notice that Nugget is starting to move a little more quickly. Here, I'm slowing him down to make sure it doesn't get dangerous. Having done that, his pacing improves remarkably. Notice how slowly he's going across the tube now.
Have your dog sit in front of the swing, place his paws onto the swing, and pull himself up. The mistake most people make is they try to jump. Stay on the swing until it's stable, and then easy off. Good boy. Going up the vertical tires, the left and right feet should be on separate tires. You'll notice that Nugget is not jumping from tire to tire, but rather placing his two paws on the top and then pulling himself up. Coming down, you want to make sure your dog's left and right feet are on separate tires, as you can see Nugget here. Moving from level to level, you want to go very slowly and make sure your dog continues to have his feet on separate tires. Dogs tend to rush on this obstacle, so you are probably going to have to teach this by being on the tires with your dog, slowing him down. When you get to the bottom, it's an easy off. When jumping onto the horizontal tires, you'll land on the first tire and immediately step to the second. Because the obstacle swings and the tires roll, you'll need to keep your dog's left and right legs on separate tires. All four legs must go into the vertical tire. This is pretty difficult for a dog to learn, so when you first start teaching it, you'll have to move each paw inside the tire. Let him get balanced, and then step out. You'll step out with a balance step. Right, left, right, left. Traversing the tires on the other side, you continue with a balance step. Nugget is watching a truck dump stone to his left, so he's drifting that way. Ideally, he'd stay in the center two tires. When jumping off, make sure your dog puts at least two feet on the board for safety.